you are making the world a better place by listening to the Joy of Living podcast. This is your guide to achieving a more purposeful, powerful, and positive life. Join Barry Shore in unlocking the best version of you and becoming happier, healthier, and wealthier. And now, here's your ambassador of joy, Barry Shore. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good-looking people. Maybe you're good-looking because always looking for and finding the good. You're found good in abundance because you have consciously and conscientiously tuned into the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore. And you did this for one reason and one reason only. It's the best reason in the whole world because you care the most in the entire world about you. Y-O-U. And that's great because when you become the best you, you make the world a better place. You build more bridges of harmony. You create more joy, happiness, peace, and love in the world. And right now, you are being joined by 348,613 people around the world, all of whom are tuning in to the Joy of Living podcast because they care about themselves. And that's great because when you do that, the result will be You'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier because you know that on our show, what we do is we discuss the three fundamentals of life. When you follow these three fundamentals of life, you become happier, healthier, and wealthier. Who doesn't want that? Especially with the amazing transformative figure that you're going to be introduced to in a few minutes who's going to rock your brain and expand your consciousness. So buckle up and get ready because Dave really knows how to set a fire and enjoy your life more and more. So the three fundamentals of life, of course, are number one, life has purpose. That's right. Your life has purpose. And when you lead a purpose-driven life, number two happens. Now, in this case, a good number two, you go MAD. Now, MAD is a wonderful acronym that stands for make a difference. You lead a purpose-driven life, you make a difference in the world. And the third fundamental of life is to uncover the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Every simple example, great word, smile, seeing miracles in life every day. That's what it stands for, seeing miracles in life every day. Now, I'm speaking to groups on a regular basis. Recently, I was in a, a situation, I spoke to 1,176 people in the audience and invariable people raise their hand and say, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, I've been up for hours where I haven't seen any miracles. And I asked them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you stand still? I can't do that. Can you walk? I can barely do that. Do you have water to drink? Do you have food to eat? Do you have a place to sleep? Do you have family or friends? Every single one of those is a miracle. And what's the proof? Simple proof. A million people didn't get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. By definition, if you're listening to this or watching it, you didn't. Therefore, you have an obligation to live life to the full, to live life exuberantly. Let me share with you an interesting story. At least I think it is because about me. <laughs> Imagine the following. A, being heart, healthy and hearty in the morning, able to leave tall buildings in a single bound, and that evening being in the hospital totally, completely paralyzed, and not from an automobile accident, not a spinal injury, a rare disease took over my body and rendered me what's called a quadriplegic. Nothing in my body moved from my neck down. I can only communicate by blinking my eyes. I was 144 days in the hospital. <clears throat> Pardon me, in the hospital. I was two years in a hospital bed in my own home. I couldn't turn over by myself. I was four years in a wheelchair. I had braces on both my legs, my hips to my ankles. That was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven-foot walking wand, but I still can't walk up a stair by myself. I can't walk up a curb by myself. I'm a tripod, not a biped, and I have help 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, all because of this one word, smile, seeing miracles in life every day. I got to tell you quickly, <laughs> my eight-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago and she says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile S-M-I-E-L? 
I thought about it. Smile, smile, sounds the same. Why not? I asked her, how come? She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. Out of the mouth of babes. What was she doing? She was creating the kind of world she wants to live in. Now, create is a remarkably powerful acronym that stands for causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. And you're going to learn a lot about shift in rethinking and enabling you to use your brain even more than you do now. And you'll have a lot more fun. You'll be a lot happier, healthier, and wealthier by doing that. So we're going to internalize the six most important words that you'll ever learn. And these words will help shift your life into a higher frequency, higher vibration. And they are choice, not chance determines your destiny. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. How you choose to respond in any given situation will enable you to shift your perspective and the trajectory of your life. Now, before we bring on wonderful Dave Farrell, I want to uh, warn everybody in advance that I do use a lot of four-letter words. And I even use the four-letter F-U word. I do it because of the shock value and it's fun. Now, the four-letter words that we use, of course, because we live in the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, the four-letter words we use are love, life, hope, free, grow, gift, play, pray, swim. <laughs> and the four-letter F-U word is fun. Fun, that's right. F-U, capital N, capital N. I know some people right away raise their hand and say, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, fun's only spelled with three letters. Not in our world. In the world of the positive, purpose, of power, and pleasure, fun is spelled F-U, capital N, capital N. So after the show, you have a twinkle in your eye, a smile on your face. Remember this stands so I want you to point your finger and your family and friends say, F-U, everybody. Remember to add right away, capital N, capital N. I say, where'd you get that? I said, I listened to Barry Shore on the joy of living, and he wants to teach the world to F you. So before we bring on Dave Farrow, I'm going to urge everybody to use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day, consciously and conscientiously from now and the rest of your life. And the reason is because it will help you, your family, your friends, and all living beings, and you'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. And these two words are, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank stands for to harmonize and nurture kindness. To harmonize and nurture kindness. The Dalai Lama is a quote is saying, I read in his writings, be kind whenever possible. And he says, always possible. So imagine you walk into your coffee shop, you order a fancy latte, you sit down, somebody brings it to you, say thank you. You walk in the coffee shop, you answer your fancy, order your fancy latte, you sit down, a couple of minutes go, I know what it brings it to you. You go to the counter, they say, what, sorry, we forgot, we're busy, we'll bring it to you. You sit down, another minute goes by, somebody brings it to you, still say thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop and it's raining out. Somebody holds the door open for you, you say thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining out, somebody slams the door on you. You say thank you. You're stuck in traffic. You lay for an appointment. Somebody cut you off. You say, thank you. You get up in the middle of the night and you stub your toe and it hurts. You say, that's right, thank you. To harmonize and nurture kindness. Kind is a wonderful acronym that stands for keep inspiring noble deeds. I can't think of anybody, anybody that inspires noble deeds that I want to share with you more than wonderful, amazing, fabulous, Dave Farrow. Dave, please say hello to 359,822 people around the world. Hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> and they're answering back. We're doing great, Dave. Why are you here? So let me tell you a couple things about Dave Farrow. We're just going to jump right in because this is going to rock your world. I mean, in a good, good way. Uh, if I started telling you all the details about Dave's life, take the rest of the show. So I'm just going to tell you three quick data points. Ready? Dave Farrow is known for his brain power. That's right, brain power. Not only is he in the Guinness Book of Records, he's been in the Guinness Book of Records twice. He has one of the most phenomenal memories on planet Earth. But the best part of it is he's going to share with us right now how you will never, ever say ever again in your life, well, I don't have a good memory. Those words will never escape your lips because you have a fine memory. And Dave is going to show us how to improve it. Is that right, Dave? Absolutely. We're going to go through a lot of fun stuff and uh, some pretty interesting. F you, Dave. F you. F, F you too, man. 
Camp oh, okay. Ed Land. <laughs> okay, let's just dive right in. And um, okay, you made a big bold claim to me before we got on the show, and that is that you're going to share with people. By the way, share stands for spreading happiness and rejuvenating energy. You're going to share with people how to triple their memory in two minutes or less. So the clock is ticking, Dave Farrow. Let's hear it. All right, and I'm gonna to smile too because I'm gonna start making it look easy. All right, so uh, one of the things you have to understand about your memory is that you already have a powerful memory. It's just very selective. Now, people make the jokes, oh, you have a selective memory as in you, know, you don't really you know, remember anything you, you don't care about. But um, it's, actually, it's actually a little more interesting than that. See, the brain pays attention to things that it finds interesting, not you. I wanna make that clear. Your brain thinks different things are interesting than you think they are. So that earworm that you can't get out of your head, uh, that YouTube video where you saw the football hit the guy in the crotch or whatever it was, um, <clears throat> that sort of thing your brain thinks is really important and tries to remember it. Now you think to yourself, wait a second, why does my brain think that that's really important? Well, it's actually a survival skill. Um, if we think of our brains as kind of a remnant of 200,000 years ago, hunter-gatherers uh, trying to make sense of the world, that is what our brains are really geared and orientated. They're really the fittest for that environment. And we're trying to put it into our modern environment. And as a result, we have you know unprecedented levels of stress, of anxiety, um, and, and all sorts of things. Most of these things, I believe, could be traced back to the fact that we're trying to fit our kind of primitive brain, our, our uh, hunter-gatherer brain, into the modern world and memory is a part of that. So um, going back to why you remember that guy being hit, hit in the groin with a, with a football, but you won't remember your math homework. Well, quite, quite simply, your brain thinks that that is more important because it's very visual, it's very vivid, it's something that you see. And yes, it actually, actually affects your survival. If you spend any time in the woods, I'm Canadian by birth, I, I go to the woods all the time. I can tell you from pure experience, uh, being out there, being able to pay attention to what is unique and different in your environment is a survival trait. If you see a track, if you see a broken twig, and that actually lets you know that there's a predator nearby, that can save your life. So that's what our, our brains are geared to do, is to pay attention to the extraordinary and the different. And the problem is we're memorizing things by repeating them over and over and over, making them incredibly boring, right? So boring, boring, boring. We don't want that. That's why Dave Farrow is here. He is anything but boring. That's right. And we're all going to win. As in what's important now. See, I got a few acronyms for you there, Barry. What's important now. That's, That's right. how Dave wins every single time. All right. So um, one, of, one of the reasons why you remember something is uh, actually this uniqueness principle, something that's unique or different. Your brain's going to remember it, but you don't have to just wait around till something gets unique. You can actually make it happen. So I'll give you a great example. You know, my name's Dave. You probably forgot that the second you heard it. Right. But if you imagine a giant wave hitting me because it rhymes with Dave, you know, or imagine shoving me into a cave or something. Don't make me your slave. You might be at a rave. I don't know. But pick one of those, visualize it, and all of a sudden, that's interesting, that's weird, that's different. Next time you see me, you'll actually remember that silly picture, and it'll stick in your mind. Now, my picture is actually me riding a surfboard on the wave that's crashing into Dave. So the next time I see him, I say, hey, Dave. By the way, I want to emphasize to people that... You don't want to have to be writing things down and just, just let the waves flow over around you. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to my website, www.whatawonderfulworld.barryshore.com, B-A-R-R-Y-S-H-O-R-E, <laughs> barryshore.com. Everything about Dave Farrell will be there. Everything you want to know about him, his wife, his son, his bank account, um, all wait that. Wait a second, everything? Wait, wait, wait. I didn't, I didn't. How we made everything. all the information for this show? Oh, my God. Yes, and when you go to the website, what you want to do is you want to share it with five people. So we have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, thank God, that listen all over the world. Just share with five people, and therefore will touch a million and a half people. So it's I really important. So here's what Dave just told us, I believe, and to how do you triple your memory in two minutes or less is by creating these unique, fantastic images. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah. So you want to you want to exaggerate things and, and visualize them. This is also true if you're studying. I actually have students uh, at, in major colleges and universities, by the way, uh, when I'm helping them through uh, reading week and things like that. Uh, one of the things we do is we get a separate piece of paper and they actually start doodling. Now you think, well, why are we going back to doodling? Why, why are we teaching people how to be distracted? Well, the fact is it actually helps our brain translate the information better. So when we come up with some of these silly pictures, they start writing them down and doodling them. And uh, in my tests and in actually double blind scientific tests as well, uh, we found that this actually improves memory by up to three times. So uh, if you remember, say, 30 percent of something this time, you know, you'll go up to 90 percent. Um, the next thing I want to actually talk about is focus. I have an acronym for it. Focus means follow one course until success. How's that? Is that a pretty good acronym? Barry? Wait a minute. I love it. I want you to say it a little slower, though. Follow one course until success. So follow um, one course until success, because that's, right. that's what focus does. That's right. And be brave, bold, resilient, authentic, vulnerable, and empowered. I got a million of them. I I, I can I can. But wait I can a minute. Are, are you exaggerating or it's true? Do you have a million? I I got, I got like twenty five maybe. Yeah. I mean, okay. Right. Now what about <laughs> for brain? I have I just made one up for brain before we got on the show. Oh yeah. What's, what's your one for brain? What's your, what's the one for brain? I don't, I don't have one for brain, actually. I should have got well, one. How about this one? Beneficial rejuvenating activity, increasing nurturing. Oh, that's nice. I love that. I thought you would. Loves love living that. on vibrant energy. That's what love is. There you go. There you go. A, deter, a dream, determination, resilience, energy, and, ambitious, and ambition, and a motivation. Okay. Yes, and dream big. Big stands for believe in giving, which is what Dave is all about, by the way. One of the reasons I urged him and pleaded with him to be on the show is that uh, we've done things together, done business together. He is a most remarkable, clever, capable businessman. And that's what he's used his brain power, again, in the book of Guinness Book of Records, twice, not once, but twice. Uh, I'm only in there once, which is very interesting, but uh, so I'm working on my number it's not, two. It's not, it's not a race, Barry. It's okay. It's not a race. <laughs> right, the brain, um, a better recall and improved neuroplasticity. That is wonderful. Better recall, and improve improving. Neuroplasticity. All right. So here's something for focus, actually. So a lot of times people are trying to focus and they think focus means to be on the ball and, and at your peak for hours and hours and hours, because that's what our bosses want in, you know, in the boardroom or in, or in the office or, or uh, in the factory or wherever you're working. Um, and uh, the simple fact is that's not natural for the human body and certainly not natural for the brain. Every time you do a cognitive activity, that is every time you think of something, try to memorize or recall or do math or anything like that, uh, you're actually taking some of the, what I would call positive Hormone, all the hormones in your brain are positive, but I mean the ones that are positive for cognition, for learning. You're taking a lot of them and uh, using them up and actually creating byproducts that make it very difficult to think. Things like serotonin and others that'll make you feel sleepy. This is why you feel tired after only studying for, say, an hour if the if the material is really difficult. Um, you might have slept a full night, uh, but your brain chemistry is so out of balance, you feel incredibly tired. There's a simple a hack for this actually. I call it focus bursts. I came up with it in the 90s and it's helped thousands of students. Um, what you want to th think of uh, really difficult mental tasks, you want to think of it the same way you think of exercise. Do them in, in short kind of interval training. You know, like you think like a boxer boxes for a round and then takes a break and then boxes for another round. That's how they can keep going for so long. Same with, um, you know, the, the uh, um, uh, some of the uh, the CrossFit stuff nowadays, uh, HIIT training, you know, all of this stuff. It, what it does is it, it, it works the body really, really intensely, then gives it a break and then works it really intensely. We know in the wild, hunter-gatherer again, that's much more like the real world out in the jungle there and in the wild. So the brain is the same way. The brain likes to think intensely. Have you ever had that time where you're completely focused in the zone and everything? The brain loves that state. It can't maintain it for long. Maybe five to eight minutes at most. I'm not exaggerating. Okay, so let's let's you know, unpack. Five minutes, you can do a lot. Let's unpack some of the things you're saying because again, Dave lives, breathes, eats, and internalizes this. And now what he's sharing. I was wondering where you're going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I do with it? Yeah. So he is the primary expositor on the planet Earth of enabling you to utilize your brain better. So let's just unpack a couple of things you just mentioned. That 
the brain is a powerful engine and you're saying that it's best suited for working in short bursts, right? You yeah. mentioned five to eight minutes. Let's use the five minute rule. Uh, yeah. Avoid the word rule for just a moment, but five minutes. The ability to think deeply, clearly about a particular issue for five minutes is really a powerful, positive, purposeful, and pleasant activity. But at the same time, it needs to have rest after that. Is that what you're saying? You want to use yeah, and, 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 deep and, and then rest. rest. Yeah, when I say rest, I don't mean you go, you know, you go have a coffee break or anything for a half hour or something. You just need, you know, two to three minutes in between to kind of clear your head. Some people like to, you know, meditate. Other people like to read a book, but just something that clears your head a little bit. And you'll find you go back to the task 100% refreshed. And it seems weird. It seems odd because it's counter to what a lot of our teachers taught us growing up. But it is the secret to how I got in the Guinness Book of Records, if anybody's curious. I certainly couldn't memorize 59 decades. Wait a minute. I'm curious. Oh, wait a minute. I'm curious. How did you get into the Guinness Book of Records, Dave? <laughs> I, I, I memorized uh, 59 decks of cards all shuffled together. That's okay, one cards. moment, one moment. Let's put it in perspective. So if anybody that's listening doesn't know what a deck of cards is, uh, a deck of cards, yeah, at least non-Italian, I don't know if you know this, Dave, but in Italy, a deck of cards is 40 only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but in the rest of the world, deck of cards is 52. So you memorize 59 times 52, which is how much? That's 3,068. So Sorry? 3,068 cards in total. 3,068 cards all shuffled together. And now Dave gets a chance to look at them. And now he's able to recall 3,068 cards correctly. Yeah. And that got him into the Guinness Book of Records. Well, that might put somebody else in the nut house. But it, put <laughs> him almost, in the it almost put me there, too. I had a headache for a week. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, but, but no, but think of a task like that or think of something, you know, similar, which would be like going for a thesis or going for a PhD or finishing that article or, you know, whatever it is for you, um, writing a book, right? You can't right. do this all in one go. You have this powerful inspiration. You get some ideas out or you, you do some editing or something, and then you hit a natural wall. Well, I'm actually telling people stop before you hit that wall, because that wall is created by brain chemistry. And after you hit that wall, you have to take a break for hours to, to get that full. So wait a minute, this is, this is so important what you just said. Yeah. Everybody knows, or if you begin to work on yourself, you know that you have a particular wall. Let's just call that eight minutes. Like you said, five to eight yeah. minutes. Let's say that the eight minute mark. Well, I, um, I would say most people feel like they hit the wall after 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. But I'm telling them they should stop sooner because when you hit the wall, it's too late. You've already thrown your brain too far out of whack and, and you're, you're losing a lot of peak capability. So this is, if you know nothing else from today's interaction, stop before you hit the wall. Now, by the way, you might want to enjoy this, uh, Dave, So, because yep. we love acronyms and such. So uh, the title of my newest book is called O Shift. And in 40 plus years of working with people, over a million people I've worked with in the past 40 years, 97.2% of them drop the F and shift and the other stuff happens. So ah, be, that's nice. You got to be F and careful with your F. So this is what Dave is sharing with us before you, the, the T and shift is transformation. Before you get to that, I get an acronym for you. How about the power of your mind? Uh, and by mind, I mean how mnemonics improve neural development. I think that that is absolutely wonderful and, exo and exotic and exuberant. How do you like that? And that's, by the way, again, the reason we love Dave is because he is flexible, is resilient, and he continues to come up with things that energize people rather than drain people. See, there's only, we live in a digital world. You talked about the primitive mind. Well, we live in a digital world, not an analog world. In a digital world, you're either a fountain or a drain. The reason I asked Dave Farrow to come on is because his middle name is Fountain. Dave Fountain Farrow. Because he's always bubbling up with goodness and graciousness and being of benefit to people. His middle name also is Bob, being of benefit. So Dave Fountain Bob Farrow is sharing with us these simple these, these tips. So let's talk about things that happen to people on a regular basis, Dave, which is, well, what's your name? 
<laughs> we just met, you know, a minute ago, and you're in a room with, let's say, even just a modest amount of people, seven other people who you've never met before, and you want to remember their names and their faces, and you say, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> tell us, give yeah. us two or three tips so that it never happens again, and you're you're now the star of the room. Yeah, no, seriously, uh, it goes back to that hunter-gatherer brain, you know, the hunter-gatherer is looking for something that's unique and different, visual, something that's uh, that's interesting, that, that excites the senses, and names are not that. When names are very common, you know, yeah, I'm Dave, there's a lot of Daves out there, for example, that sort of thing. Uh, they're not visual, they don't mean anything, they don't have a, a, a height, width, depth, you know, there's no physical attributes to it. So that's really why these things are, are missed. Um, one of the tricks you can do, though, is to ask yourself questions. We have this one little uh, brain hack where um, every day for let's try this for about a week uh, we have little uh, cue cards right so you put one in your in your in your car you put one beside your bed you put one in your on your desk something like that right and every time you see the card you want to look at somebody and in your mind's eye ask yourself hey I wonder what their name is or if you can just remember to do this throughout the day look around and as you see random people think to yourself hey what's their name what's their name I wonder what their name is and these questions actually train the brain to be curious. And you'll find that the next time you hear a name, your brain will pounce on it like a, like a tiger on a, on a meal uh, because you've been kind of training it to be curious about names because up until now, your brain doesn't really see any reason to remember names. They, they don't have anything for your survival. And, and I know it sounds weird because consciously it's very important to us, you know, logically, but Again, your brain subconsciously, it doesn't, you know, give you food or shelter. It doesn't really do anything like that. So it doesn't really tie that into that sort of survival mechanism that your brain wants. But ask yourself those questions. Get yourself curious. Look at a person in the grocery store and say, yeah, I wonder what their name is. I wonder what their name is. And next time you hear a name, it'll, it'll, it'll just stick out in your mind and you'll pay more attention. So let me unpack what you just said. <clears throat> we, I, want to create curiosity in my brain. I want my brain to be a curious tracker of yes. people. And so I'm going to literally look around and ask, I wonder what that person's name is. I wonder what that person's name is. And that, that brain hack will enable my brain to respond to someone's name, even as vanilla as Dave. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> as vanilla as it will. Thank you very much, sir. Barry. Yeah. Uh, I think Barry's pretty ordinary too, uh, right. but you're, you're pretty extraordinary, I'll say. Um, yeah. So it, what it does is it trains the brain to pay attention to something that you're not paying attention to. You can actually use it for any uh, task. Um, you know, we just find that the names, it just fits so well, that, 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 that sort of curiosity thing. Now, if you want to master actually memorizing names, there is a trick to it. I taught, I kind of hinted at it before where you're visualizing things uh, and you visualize my name, Dave is like a wave. Um, the simple version, version of this. Now in my course and in my book, there's a lot more, you know, goes a lot more in depth on how you can walk into a room and memorize like a hundred people's names. But the simple way to understand this working is to use an analogy of a costume party. If you think of a costume party, uh, you can sometimes think back to a year before and you'll remember all the costumes people wore. You won't remember their names, but you remember all the costumes, right? So what if you turn their names into a costume? You make a little game in your head, right? You know, um, uh, Barry, I mean, this won't, won't appeal to a lot of people who aren't comic book fans, but I always thought of The Flash with you. And it's really great that you're so into exercise because uh, Barry Allen is The Flash, right? Uh, for me, Dave might be a wave, right? Um, my last name, Pharaoh, you might think of me as an Egyptian pharaoh, like the pharaoh of memory. Um, you know, Bob becomes a bobby pin. Uh, you know, Mike uh, is, is carrying around a giant boom microphone. You know, Mary is getting married in a wedding dress. All of these things you can turn into costumes. And you'd be surprised, even very, you know, complex names. You know, like I met a Sharifa the other day, and I imagined her as being a sheriff of a, of a, of a town um, in a country uh, a film, a, a cowboy film. Um, you know, Sheriff Sheriff. So here, here's right? an interesting one. I work with people all over the world. And at the moment, I'm working with a number of people in uh, India. I'm working with people in Indonesia. And there are different names. <laughs> so here's a name for you, Dave, plain yeah. vanilla Dave. Uh, Venkat, V-E-N-K-A-T, Venkat. Yeah, so Anytime you have a complex name, there's actually a way to handle it. This is this is where we get into the more advanced stuff. But you break it up into syllables, right? Venkat sounds difficult, but then when you break it up into Ven and Cat, 
well, you know, a cat is like a little meow, little like a little cat, uh, a pet. A uh, Venn could be a vein. It could be a Venn diagram. It could be a vent. You know, whatever pops into your head first, you know. I love it. So again, names are important, by the way, for people to remember because there is nothing sweeter in the world. There's no sound more beautiful than someone calling your name. Am I correct, Dave? I mean, isn't that yeah, no, it, it really does make a huge difference. And it also, people think uh, you're smarter if you remember them. Well, you are. And that's, by the way, everybody, you're listening to the Joy of Living podcast because you know on this particular podcast, you become happier, healthier, wealthier, which means smarter. Now, right. we are going to go to a break right now. And um, I'm urging everybody, people love sponsoring the show. We have great offers from people. So support them. They're wonderful. And we'll be right back with more Dave Farrow and benefits for you overflowing in just a few minutes. Don't go away. There's more Pharaoh coming back, the Egyptian prince on the other side of this short break. Opportunity. What an opportunity. I'm going to use two four-letter words right now. Free gift. Free gift. Yes. You can have a copy of my best-selling book, The Joy of Living, How to Slay Stress and Be Happy, the ebook version for absolutely free. All you have to do is send an email to me, Barry, B-A-R-R-Y, at barryshore.com, and in the heading, the subject line, just write, free gift. <laughs> it's as easy as that. This is a life changing life enhancing opportunity barry at barryshore.com you'll be glad you did thank you thank you thank you free gift do it now take the action make it happen right now best wishes bye imagine the kind of place you would want to shop for your favorite fur baby pet honest pets.co well you found it honestpets.co not .com .co this is your go-to spot for the best the cleanest pet treats that exist anywhere in the planet all of the brands go through a rigorous review to make sure they meet the high standards of cleanliness health benefits and naturalness this site was started by a husband and wife team and it's veteran owned and that care about pets, especially dogs and cats, and coming soon, bird treats. These are very nice young people who really care about making a difference because a portion of proceeds go to support veteran organizations with a focus on service dogs. This is the place where you want to go. You want to tell your friends this has the finest, yummiest, freshest, all-natural treats and stuff for your fur baby. So go there, honestpets.co honestpets.co do it now yes okay so absolutely so uh really the key to uh to brain plasticity and changing your brain is uh believe it or not the the one of the biggest ones is maintaining positivity people who are positive and optimistic have better brain function uh it's been something that's been you know double split tested and 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 verified a ton of times um one of the other factors that might influence this or might be a part of this is that people who are more social have better brains so get out there and meet new people uh make friends uh this uh, time during covid has actually been very 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 difficult on a lot of people. We've uh, discovered that, uh, it, long story short, one of the biggest preventatives, let's say, for uh, for Alzheimer's and dementia turns out to be uh, being social interaction. It's one of the only things we can't teach an AI to do. We can't teach them to have a conversation, right? So it really stimulates the brain in ways other things do not. When people were isolated for so long, uh, it really affected a lot of people's memory and people who are borderline, uh, you know, really tried to, started to uh, slide down. So uh, reverse that trend, get out there, be, be active and meet new people. The other major thing you can do is is uh, try taking on a larger goal. Try to learn something new every day. Uh, one of the reasons why we had great memories when we were in school and we don't when we're in the workplace is we're not studying anymore, right? We're not learning anything. We don't have an exam two weeks from now that we have to memorize some stuff for. So, uh, you know, try learning that language you always wanted to learn, you know, practice like say five words a day. It's just something simple like that. And it trains your brain and you start paying more attention. Anytime you're learning something new, that actually does translate to multiple different areas of the brain. Mo one of the biggest problems in brain training is 
called transference, where one skill doesn't transfer to the other. So playing Sudoku doesn't really help you in other areas, for example, right? But memorizing and learning something like a language or a musical instrument that involves multiple different aspects to it tends to translate to the rest of your day-to-day -day life. You'll find that you're sharper. You will you know, walk into a room and you'll remember why you walked in there and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which does happen as one gets past yeah. the age of 43. Uh, let me just mention, to, uh, uh, ask a question, then mention something specifically. So you mentioned about being positive, yeah. optimistic, social, and I call it transformative. That's called post. Positive, right. optimistic, social, and transformative. Now, um, I sent my kids to school where they learned three languages before they were eight years old. Wow. And yes, well, I say it not to, to show off, but because my wife and I firmly believe, first of all, and the other language is very helpful in, in our, our particular social world. But the point is that kids are so flexible that they don't know that they're learning three different languages and it's hard. <laughs> they don't think like that. Yeah. Say, okay, I'm learning this, I learned the French, I learned Hebrew, I learned English, it, it doesn't matter. Now, by the way, the same thing happens oftentimes in Canada, in one of the provinces where French is the dominant language and English is the second language. Uh, so most people in that province are at least bilingual, if not trilingual. And I have found, and I'm asking you because you mentioned learning other languages, that that really helps expand the consciousness. Is that correct? Uh, well, I'm I'm Canadian uh, as well as you know, um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, study on that. Uh, the the university that I did some of my neuroscience uh, study there, uh, uh, McGill University, is in Montreal, and they've actually done a number of studies trying to show how bilingualism changes the brain. And uh, but you know, that, yeah, long story short, you know, having that stimulation around you uh, really helps keep you sharp. And we're talking the the sort of sharpness that it takes to uh, you know, like say you want to remember a number long enough to type it in you know you ever had that where you have to you know read a number uh, a code or something a verification or something and then you go over here and you got to type it in and remember it some people can hold it the whole time some people have to go back and forth a couple of times that's the that that's actually kind of one of the measurements of how much space you have in your brain to handle these things and it seems that when people are regularly learning new uh, information languages is one of the best examples then uh, they have more spaces they have they have a higher capacity it's actually um it's actually a a, a a fantastic uh, tool uh, called cognitive reserve. That is, as we get older, uh, we don't necessarily have um, a limit to what our brain can do. Some of that is determined by our genetics, you know, whether or not we have a physical uh, impediment. But uh, we do know that brain training builds up what's called a cognitive reserve. That is, your brain can rewire itself around any areas that are not uh, functioning at, at, at pure performance as long as you're stimulating it, as long as you're pushing it, it will build up this reserve. And that's really what you want to achieve because that reserve can can keep you sharp as a tack, uh, you know, well into your senior years. There, there have been examples where people had shown no signs of, of, of Alzheimer's or no signs of uh, or symptoms of memory loss. And then uh, later on an autopsy, they did have uh, the plaques and tangles involved with Alzheimer's. And this is where some of the cognitive reserve theory came in, the idea that we can actually rewire ourselves around things. So, and I'm, I'm not saying that to be morbid or anything, but I wanted to actually inspire people that if you're worried about this, uh, there is, you have much more power than you think. And you need to, to take, take charge of that. This is fabulous. I want to harp on this, what you just mentioned. Oh, strings. You have much more power than you think. You have much more power than you think. And that's what David's talking about. I'm going to give you a, a concrete example. Uh, it's in my book, The Joy of Living. You deserve it. And I speak about my interactions with an amazing being named Aida. I'll make it very short. I met Aida when she was 95. In 90, at 95, she was still sharp. We were in the pool together. I was swimming. She was walking in her lane and such. Uh, suffice it to say, she just loved my energy, and I loved hers. And she would say to me, Barry, I want to be as happy as you. I said, well, you are. She said, no, I want to be really, really happy. So tell me things we can do. We worked together until the age of 106. I sang happy birthday to Aida every year from the year of 90, when she was 95 to 106. And she was still sharp, Dave, at 106. She would say to me, hi, Barry, sing me a song. I would sing a song and she would continue the lyrics. Now, 
It's just, it's, it's so wonderful. I, I, I'm the only thing I'm, I'm sorry to say at the moment is that our time together is at this moment is, is coming to a conclusion. However, I'm going to ask you three quick questions. Are you ready, Dave Farrow? Uh, no, but I'll okay. do it anyway. <laughs> Number one, will you come back again? Sure. Thank you. Number two, you have 80 seconds only to answer this question. Right. What is your most fervent desire? Um, I want everyone in my life to be happy and well-fed. That's a very great desire. And it's happening, right? Uh, it's happening, yeah. Most Good. And you're, you're helping happen. make it so. And number three, may I give you a hug in front of 362,897 people around the world? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let me tell you what HUG stands for. HUG stands All for right. heartfelt, unlimited giving. Oh. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank the you. Joy of Living Podcast with your humble host, Barry Shore, an amazing Dave Farrow. And you got to understand something fundamental. This show is not about Dave Farrow, great guy that he is. Not about Barry Shore, fabulous fellow that he is. This show is about you. Why owe you? You becoming the best you. So he's called it the joy of living. Joy stands for journey of you. And it's all become learning and using the three fundamentals of life. Number one, life has purpose. Number two, you lead a purpose driven life. You go mad, make a difference, just like we've been learning from wonderful Dave. Number three is unlock the power and the sequence of everyday words and terms. You heard lots of them today. Again, just go to my website, barryshore.com, and you'll listen again, listen again, three times, classic for memory, and then share this with five people. And the result is you'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. We guarantee it or double your money back. And remember, smile, seeing miracles in life every day, or as my eight-year-old niece says, seeing miracles in everyday life. Create the kind of world you want to live in, causing rethinking, listen to the day, causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. And use four-letter words, love, life, hope, free, grow, play, pray, swim, and tell the world to F you. Remember to add right away, capital N, capital N. Use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day from now and the rest of your life, and it will make you, your family, your friends, and all living beings happier, healthier, and wealthier. They are Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Stan, so to harmonize and nurture kindness. Everyone, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Therefore, be kind always. Keep inspiring noble deeds. Wonderful, Dave. A huge thank you from Barry and everybody in our studio. And we want to leave everybody with a beautiful blessing, which is go forth. Live exuberantly, spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference. Dave, don't go away. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joy of Living podcast. Now that's another step towards your healthier, happier, and wealthier life. Never hesitate to do good in the world, no matter what the situation. Join us for another upbeat discussion next time at BarryShore.com. And be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show to get more conversations like this. And remember to share it with your family and friends, too. See you on the next episode.